Good evening, folks. This is Kate Peterson. Kate is a fact check fellow for the USA Today. In reviewing her work, she has a lot of good fact checks, but her latest one was, and I'm so sorry, Kate, complete garbage and not a fact check at all. Let's ignore for a moment the fact that everyone discussing solar and geomagnetic climate forcing pretty much got it here, and to go after someone else's Facebook post is a bit sheepish. But it contains interviews and exchanges, no citing of peer-reviewed literature. But she did cite NASA's climate blog, the exact one that started a fight one year ago, and if you recall, they were so outmatched they resorted to name-calling, ad hominem attacks, and then stopped responding. We are going to go over her work here and pick it apart piece by piece, and do so quickly and concisely, since time is a commodity and so is brain power, apparently. Kate, this is nothing personal, and I'm sorry for what's about to happen. She begins her non-scientific analysis by using quotes from people who get big grant money to plug anthropogenic global warming. Not exactly peer-reviewed or unbiased, but the gist is that the solar wind doesn't have the energy to heat the troposphere the lower atmosphere where we live, and that it only affects the thermosphere, also known as the ionosphere, up at the top of the sky. She'd have you believe it's just solar irradiance, sunlight, that carries the power of the sun. Well, I hope I don't have to tell you how much light and energy is bound within just a single particle. If I do, Google nuclear explosion. But in terms of real science, I could pick from hundreds of peer-reviewed papers, but I don't want to overwhelm you. So how about this one from two Harvard guys? In it, you will find lots of good information about the risks of solar flares, but you will also find the surge in temperature from some known events. Did you know that the 2003 particle event from the sun warmed regions by three degrees? Three times what global warming is right now and it happened in a day. The 1859 Carrington event surged temperatures up to seven degrees before bleeding back out, but it's the more regular events that really have the huge contribution. Well, let's go ahead and assume Kate is correct, however, that it only affects the thermosphere, the ionosphere, at least directly. But that doesn't just affect the ionosphere, and not just the polar region. That's what equatorward traveling waves are, and their activity through the ionosphere. Have you ever heard of CME compression of the magnetic bow shock, which pushes relativistic electrons down into the atmosphere? That's another way. The ionosphere is the ceiling of the global electric circuit, which affects everything below it. In every pressure cell on Earth, which cover the entire Earth, there is either an upward or downward current, which not only affects surface temperature, but winds, precipitation, and most importantly, clouds, which block sunlight. Speaking of which, the activity of the solar wind is the only thing controlling the cosmic ray bombardment of our planet, which is also well known to affect cloud formation, which is me playing within your sunlight-only paradigm here, Kate. Neither the cosmic ray modulation nor the global electric circuit should be ignored. And just because it more than doubles the complexity of climate models, which is their excuse for not using them, does not make them go away. Up next, it's the never-ending train of grant-fueled political propaganda, referring to the papers that say it's all greenhouse gases, it's all our fault, and that what's happening now is not natural. First, Kate, I am happy to send you copies of my textbook on this subject, 300 pages, 500 citations of peer-reviewed literature. You should learn what that looks like. And it's covering not only the power of the sun, but the failures of climate models. Did you ask anyone about the paleoclimate model disagreements, which suggest they overly bias carbon dioxide, or about their failure to properly model cloud effects? If you did, you didn't put it in your article. There's plenty more in our 2022 supplement, which, Kate, you can also have for free. And regarding your comment about this not being natural, ask yourself what Dansgaard Oshker events are then. Three, five, up to eight degrees of warming in as little as 40 years. Nobody questions that those are natural, and they dwarf global warming in magnitude in a fraction of the time. I would bet money that Kate has never heard of these events. And that's probably because people largely stopped discussing them in mainstream circles when the grant money surged for anyone willing to blame human activity for the modern one degree of warming over nearly two centuries. Then, Kate goes completely off the rails, suggesting we've lost only 9% of our magnetic field in 200 years, and that it's completely normal. First, why not try this NASA article which showed back in the year 2000 we had already lost 10%, 
Then the Swarm mission launched and they realized the field was accelerating its loss from 5% lost per century to 5% lost per decade, which is why they updated that 10% figure to 15% and that was in 2010. By the way, that puts us comfortably over 20% down now. Also, the magnetic poles are shifting and accelerating that shift, and that's not normal either. But let's go a bit further down her page, and this really isn't her fault if she's taking the word of people she interviewed. They say scientists have considered solar wind and the weakening magnetic field and discounted them as climate factors. That is 100% false. Yeah, you can find some papers like that from decades ago, but none using the global electric circuit, the penetrating electric fields, or any of the dozens of other ways we now know the solar wind impacts deeper into the atmosphere. Furthermore, as I have said many times, and as was the focus of a video which has added more than 30 NASA scientists and professors to the observer team, and Kate, listen closely, there is not one paper since those recent discoveries which blames humans for climate change and also factors in solar particle forcing, cosmic rays, the global electric circuit, and the weakening magnetic field. Not one. Prove me wrong. I know you can't. Not a single one of the papers blaming us actually does the hard work. Plenty of papers do touch on those subjects, but every single one of them says the sun and magnetic field are important factors in the equation. You are a fact checker, Kate. Fact check that. Find the paper Blaming Humans, which also analyzes the power of the solar wind, particle events, cosmic ray cloud modulation, the global electric circuit, and the weakening magnetic field, which amplifies all of the former. I've got a copy of each of these books with your name on them, Kate. And I'm sorry, but just asking utterly biased individuals who have a monetary incentive to go one way is not fact-checking. That's called disingenuous academic fraud of which you are hereby accused. For the rest of you, I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.